Living in the San Francisco Bay Area, I must admit I'm a little biased on one issue. Be it from California, Berkeley, or even San Francisco, we are strong advocates for using green technology. If it saves the earth and it uses less electricity, these jurisdictions are for it. But are we getting ahead of ourselves? Are these huge pushes for being green really even worth it? Personal bias aside, I'm going to give you the facts on what's happening with green technology and why you likely should be acting now. Not because it saves the earth, but simply because it can save you money. One thing that many people don't know is simply how much energy property uses in the United States compared to everything else. According to the Environmental Information Administration, buildings in the U.S. account for 72% of electricity consumption, 13% of water use, and nearly 40% of CO2 emissions. That's a huge amount of resources that is used by our buildings, be it by our homes or by our work buildings. So how can going green help and how much money can it really save me? First, let's look at an example which can very well be transferred to the real world. Going green can literally be applied to any property type, be it residential, apartment, office, industrial, so on and so forth. But the likely best candidate is gonna be a property where the owner pays utilities and the building is an older one. Again, this is the likely best candidate. Simply because you own a newer apartment building doesn't mean you shouldn't look into having your building audited. Once an owner takes the initial first step of having their building audited, which can cost anywhere from five to 10 cents a square foot, a group will closely look at two things. First, what potential does your property have such as age and amount of use for your HVAC systems? Secondly, they'll look at what federal, state, and local programs are going on that could be of benefit to you. Currently, there are multiple opportunities at the federal and local level for most building owners who want to go green. After having your building audited by the group of your choice, they'll present you with a few options. This is where we get into the payback timeframes and talk numbers. In the past, the technology was too expensive and the payback period would be 15 or even 20 years. It just made no economic sense to do any improvements. However, with the current drop in prices in multiple green sectors, such as solar panels, and the tax incentives provided by multiple sources, many people see a payback of seven to 10 years. If you live in a high electricity cost area, such as California or New York, this pushes these payback timeframes easily into under three or five years. When you look at this in numbers, a five-year payback is the same as making a 20% return and making a 20% return in commercial investment real estate currently is almost unheard of. Not only that, consider this improvement is to a building you already own. In other words, the risk of going out and buying another unfamiliar property is non-existent. If you want a real life example, let's look at two extremely well-known landmarks in the United States. The Transamerica Pyramid in San Francisco and the Empire State Building in New York City. The Transamerica Pyramid obtained its lead gold status around 2010. The owners of the building spent nearly $4 million retrofitting the building. However, they now save an estimated $1 million each year. They've reduced their waste by 70%, their water by 45%, and they make a consistent 20% return annually so long as they own the building. But by far the highest profile green project was the Empire State Building. They spent nearly $20 million and they now save nearly $6.6 .6 million annually, which translate to a three-year payback at about 30% plus return on their investment. Along with all the potential savings you could see as a building owner, this updated green building could bring you more money in the form of rent. In a recent CoStar study, green buildings command higher rent per square foot, have lower vacancy, and fetch a higher price compared to non-green buildings. UC Berkeley even did a study in 2009 stating that out of 10,000 buildings, for every $1 in energy savings realized, there was an average $18 increase in value. And there's literally tons of studies across the board which show that buildings that are up to date with green technologies have benefits to both the building owners in the form of savings and to the tenants in the form of their productivity. Tenants repeatedly report fewer sick days from employees and higher productivity. Not only can this help the tenants, it can help kids in school. A study from 2008 showed that greener school showed absenteeism reduced by five to 15%. Health costs dropped, teachers took less sick days, even reading and math scores improved significantly. Most new construction projects have many of the new green technologies in place, simply because it makes economic sense. 
five, ten years ago and prior, it usually didn't. This is why there is such a huge push for having buildings retrofitted. Yes, there's usually an upfront cost, but the payback nowadays in many places is so short, it doesn't make sense to not retrofit your building. Not only that, there's currently programs emerging that handle the brunt of these upfront costs so property owners can still retrofit their buildings just with a slight less return period. Less energy waste, less water waste, and more money in everyone's pocket. All the more reason that even if you're not a huge proponent of going green, it's hard to dispute the aspect of saving green. Now that's good to know.